Top of the Sports Max Zone for this Wednesday. Bangladesh have won the three match ODI series against the West Indies after taking the second match by nine wickets at Providence Stadium in Guyana earlier on Wednesday. This was Bangladesh's 10th straight win against the Windies in ODIs. The Windies were sent into bat and didn't spend much time in the middle. Bowled out for 108 in 35 overs. All rounder Kimo Paul batting at number eight, top scorer with 25, while opener Shea Hope made 18. Mahidi Miraz grabbed his third consecutive four-wicket haul against the Windies. Four for 29 he had, while man of the match and Nassim Ahmed, he ended with three for 19. In reply, the visitors, enabled by some ineffective West Indies bowling, made 112 for one in 20.4 overs. They won with more than 170-odd balls to spare. And even 50 from Tami Iqbal and 32 not out from Litton Das helped Bangladesh complete victory with, as we said, 176 balls to spare. Gurukesh Modi for the lone wicket for the West Indies. Let's hear from Fazir Mohammed now uh, on what happened today at Providence. Faz, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Um, the West Indies now 0-10 against Bangladesh in ODIs in their last 10 meetings. I I'm not sure if they are intimidated by Bangladesh's population, Faz. 163 million compared to our five or six. Well, something has to be going wrong. It can't be the population because we were beating them left, right and centre for many, many years when they had the same population. So, uh, really, they have our number, quite obviously, in one day international cricket. But you can always have a bad day. But I think what is more disappointing about the West Indies effort in this match is the manner of those dismissals. And if anyone looks at those highlights, and especially the, the, the list of the 10 West Indies because that went down so very quickly, uh, and that's the disheartening element of it, to see the manner in which they got out. Not taking anything away from Bangladesh and their comfort uh, with the conditions, but when you look at uh, the way the West Indies batsmen got out, the vast majority of them, it's difficult not to look beyond the fact that there was not the level of concentration, not the level of application that you'd expect at this level of the game. Yeah, you used the word just now, disheartening, Faz. Um, I would suggest that it is even more so given the fact that this is not even the strongest Bangladesh team. No, it isn't. And, and we, we talk about, you know, these things in, in context. And, and yes, the West Indies won the Test Series quite comfortably 2-0. They won the T20s 2-0. One match was rained off. It might have been 3-0 as well. But you're, you're now in a situation where the West Indies are gearing towards getting themselves sorted out as far as automatic qualification for next year's 50-over World Cup. We had to go through qualification the last time around and scrape through, courtesy of a poor umpiring decision and the weather against Scotland in the qualifier in Zimbabwe. And now you're taking on Bangladesh, who have already qualified uh, for the T20 World Cup. We still have to go through qualification for that. And we seem at a complete loss in the 50-over variety of the game. And even if you say, OK, the pitch favoured the slow bowlers, the pitch favoured the spinners, and, and therefore it was always going to be a challenge, was it so much of a challenge that it equates to 108 all out, and especially with the manner of those dismissals? And, and that's why I use the, the word disheartening to see the way they got out. Yes, Faz, and of course, in the post-match interview, uh, assistant coach Roddy Eswick was up for the questions, and when asked about the players' confidence and whatnot, he said as if he felt as that the players lacked confidence, one, and they also lacked confidence in the pitch. Now, yesterday, we had Red Emmert on the show, and Red Emmert was talking about, you know, the players, it's not the first time they're, they're playing on difficult pitches like this. They know the surface in Guyana. So why is it so difficult for them to adapt? Well, you mentioned Roddy Eswick. I will quote Roddy Eswick from last year against South Africa mm -hmm. when he said no more excuses. I, th I think we're tired of the excuses. I think we're, we're tired of the usual platitudes. Maybe, maybe tired might, might, might sound very disparaging. But again, it references that culture of losing to the extent that it doesn't really seem to be that big a deal. You play a few bad shots, you get out, you play another match next couple of days, you might get a few runs, uh, you, you bowl a lot of rubbish, you get beaten with almost 30 overs to spare, you talk about looking forward to the next match and we put you this uh, behind us, we're all a happy family and whatever else it is. 
and it, it, it just seems to be almost a treadmill where, where we, we're talking about Western East cricket. Uh, and, and again, I can understand where people say, oh, you're getting too carried away, or the, the, this great legacy and, and all of that sort of thing. But surely it has to mean something to play for the West Indies. Surely, uh, even if you perform poorly, you, you want to see some element of fight, some element of, of commitment, uh, some element of dedication, which would suggest that you don't like being embarrassed uh, to this extent. And then we look, while we're looking at this footage, let's also uh, put it into context that the West Indies fans continue to speak very, very loudly. We heard a lot of pre-series hype about the Guyanese fans being all excited and looking forward uh, to the matches coming their way. But well, there's been almost nobody in the stands. There might be a scattering of a couple of hundred that the cameras would focus on and, and, and make it appear that there are a lot more. But even Sunday, with all the rain, uh, with a, a one international being played, uh, with all of the, the fanaticism about the game in Guyana, the, the stadium remains virtually empty. And, and if, if you see, look at a performance like this, why would anyone want to come and watch the West Indies perform? Right, and you know, now that Bangladesh has already secured the series win, coach was also asked, assistant coach Radhi Aswik was also asked about, you know, how come Alzari Joseph didn't play? And he spoke, you know, glowingly about the importance of resting players. He even um, cited Jason Holder. What do you make of that notion, Faz? I understand the issue of resting players, but the, the point is that if you've got someone in form, if you've got someone who's taking wickets and he's been very successful in both the Test Series, the T20s, and, and, and I understand the issue of managing a player because there's so much cricket being played now. Uh, there's so much, uh, so many different formats of the game. So, so I understand those issues. But I want to reference what Sunil Gavaskar is reported as saying about India's top players being rested for the series in the West Indies. And he made the point, nobody asks to be rested for IPL. Nobody asks to be rested when there's big money at stake in different tournaments. And all power to the players uh, for earning significant sums of money for their talents, which they deserve to with the audiences that, that watch the game. But, but again, if you're going to be resting players, it can't be to a significant detriment to the team's performance. There has to be some understanding that, look, if we're on a winning run, if there's a player who's performing well, maybe there should be some consideration to continue with that player. But I understand that there are many different issues tied into this, but just looking at today's performance, I think it was really embarrassing. Faz, there's always reason for, for glad tidings when the West Indies are winning and to say positive things. Uh, some, though, would not have people like yourself speak the truth when the team is not winning, citing all sorts of excuses. I, I heard you earlier mention the pitch and the, the, the Guyana, how difficult it is to bat in Guyana. And you correctly said, well, does it mean that the pitch was such that it was a 108-run first bat pitch? And uh, uh, clearly the answer is no. I took the trouble, Fazir, of looking at the last... 22 times the West Indies would have played Bangladesh. And I'm talking about playing them in Bangladesh, in Ireland, in England, and in the West Indies. So they've played them in four different places. And my gosh, they say two doesn't make a series. Well, 22 certainly makes a series. Of course, you wouldn't be surprised to know that of those 22 games, West Indies would have lost 18. So what I did in those 22 games, Faz, was to isolate the number of times the West Indies would have batted first in those 22, the last 22 ODIs against Bangladesh across those four countries and what the totals were, just to see if it was only now that they were batting, batting on a sticky wicket that they weren't getting runs. The facts don't support that because of the 14 times that the West Indies has batted first in the last 22 games against Bangladesh Faz, they have made one score over 300. That was a 338 they made August 25, 2014. Yeah? Beyond that, they have made between 230 and 300 four times, from 230 to 300 four times in that stretch as well. Everything else, rubbish, 100 and plus, 200 and a little bit, 100 and plus, 200 and a little bit. This is a tale of a team that does not know how to bat in one-day cricket, and nobody is willing to say that. Nobody is willing to start the conversation there. All we are hearing is about trying harder. Try harder to do what? I understand your frustration, George, and I'm glad you, you brought out that data because also this thing about batting first, a coin has two sides. 
So there's always a 50% chance that you'll be batting first, whatever the conditions. So all of, all of this thing about a sticky pitch and it's so difficult and whatever, that might have been the case on, on, on Sunday as well. But for the first one, the international, it might have been the case today as well. But are you, are you really suggesting that the toss makes so much of a difference? That if you win the toss, you win the, and you, you bat first, the West Indies can be, it's, could be guaranteed. I, I'm not interrupting you, my friend, but just, just to add, I'm not interrupting you first here, but just to add to that about the, the, the mindset. Our captain, our captain said before the game, he quoted a statistic which made me say, oh, the West Indies are in trouble if we lose a toss. He said that the Caribbean, in the Caribbean, the team that bats first wins 79, loses 79% of the time. So I'm saying, oh, so clearly, Puran is fully plugged into we bad first, we are already losing the game. And that has seeped through, well, not even seeped through, it has flooded through the rest of the team. West Indies cricket is suffused in a, a sense of, oh, if we lose the toss in an ODI, it means we are going to lose. And, and, and it's, it's, I, said, I don't know if it's so difficult to break out of that mold. And, and, and that is why, uh, as you mentioned, the, the fact that you would mention that reinforces that. But I, again, you know, George, it, it comes down to a culture of losing. It comes down to a situation where it is quite apparent. And, and again, you look at the dismissals, and we're looking at some highlights of the, of the first ODI, of course. But, but, but I would challenge anyone. Have a look. When you, you, you are finished with this discussion and you say, well, okay, well, talking a lot of rubbish as per usual, fine, no problem. That Everybody's entitled to his or her own opinion. But go and look at those dismissals, those 10 dismissals again. And, and you can uh, determine for yourself whether or not the West Indies were thoroughly and properly and deservedly outplayed by Bangladesh to the tune of 108 all out. And that's just how it worked out. Or did the West Indies contribute to their own demise? My own opinion, humble or arrogant or however it's looked at, is that the West Indies contributed significantly to their own demise with the man of their shot selection, notwithstanding the difficult conditions, because it's part of the game. It's part of any sport that not, not everything is going to be in your favor. If you can only click when everything else around you is clicking, then you might as well click off. You know, you know Fazir, I, 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 just to jump on what you said there, I just uh, pulled up uh, a message that one of our friends in the cricket group we always mention to you that, of course, you want no part of. Someone was kind enough to just summarize the man of the mid dismissals in the game today. Two reverse sweeps, Fazir. Two slugs. Two board playing down the wrong line, one trip and one chip and drive, and one run out. That was the sum total of what the West Indies batsmen got out on what they say was a was a horrendous pitch earlier today in Guyana. Precisely, and, and, and that's the point. As I said again, no one expects, certainly not this West Indies team, to win every match or to win most of their matches. But you want to see a fight. And again, at the risk of sounding like a dinosaur, it must mean something to play for the West Indies to the extent that even if you are losing, you show that that, that, that sort of grit and that, that if you're going to lose, if they're going to get 108, let's make them work for it. Let, let's make them struggle. Let's soften them up with a few properly directed bouncers because we know their vulnerability to the short ball. But I, I didn't see any of that. And, and again, it's almost a resignation. Well, we only got 108, 75% of the time you lose when you're bad first. So we're going to lose this one. Let's see how quickly this one could, could be over and, and head out. Yeah, Lance, as, as, as we leave Mariah, I just want to say this to everybody with Fazir here, mm -hmm. that it's not, if, if we did adjust the facts trivia one day and the producers said to us, the question was, the West Indies have played Bangladesh, Australia, Pakistan, England, Sri Lanka, and well, did I say India already, in the last four years in ODI cricket, and they've lost against this team 14, seven, 18 times in 22 games. Mm -hmm. Nobody would pick Bangladesh. That's the Indian sign that Bangladesh holds over the West Indies. And I, I, I can't understand why anywhere in the world, if they play at the International Space Station for zero, Bangladesh plays the West Indies in ODI cricket. Bangladesh is almost a certainty to come away with the win, especially if they bat second. It's Fine. ridiculous. Let's, 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 let's go to Cape Canaveral and Fine. see if we can get them launching to play there. Fuzzy, you just mentioned peppering them with bounces and so on today. Were you surprised, having said that, that Jane Seals and um, Anderson Phillip were left out today? 
Not necessarily, because I understand as well. Remember, we also know that the, the championship points are not at stake. But again, yeah. as I said, to me, it means something to play for the West Indies. Yeah. I, and, and maybe they were looking at different combinations, give other players an opportunity. So, so in that context, it wasn't entirely surprising. Mm. Okay, Faz, one more game to go. It looks as if it could be the sweep for the Bangladeshis. It looks that way. West Indies, not for the first time in a series, playing for pride. Uh, we've heard that all before. I think it's about time that the players really show some pride and understand what it means to play for the West Indies, even when we might be losing. Okay, thanks, Fast. Not sure if you're going to want to talk to us about the third ODI when it, when it comes up, but you, you will hear from our producers anyway. <laughs> no yeah. problem at all. Take care. <laughs> Back with more on the zone after this. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.